my name is Francesco Delfino and I'm the CTO of Music Match. And I'm here for talking about uh, our experience with the desktop bridge that we used for uh, publishing our application to the Windows Store. So, let me first introduce my company. Uh, Music Match was founded in 2010 and uh, at that time only a couple of websites were uh, displaying legally the lyrics for uh, North America only. Uh, we spent the last seven years for uh, uh, signing contracts with hundreds of uh, publishers all around the world and we also built a platform for both delivering uh, the, this content to, to the party website and monitor its usage uh, over the web. Thanks to the explosion of the mobile apps, we decided to invest uh, in making our own uh, application that was like a sort of plugin uh, that uh, is able to enrich uh, the experience while you're listening to the music with your favorite music player. When we started, we only had still lyrics. Then we were able to build uh, the largest catalog of lyrics synchronized line by line with music. Last December, we launched uh, translations, and uh, also, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we upgraded our uh, synchronization tool on iOS in order to allow people to synchronize uh, lyrics word by word. So our app is available on lots of platforms, and we are here for talking about our experience uh, uh, with the desktop uh, application. So let me show you that. So. Music Smash for desktop is not the typical application that you expect to download from the Windows Store for several reasons. The first is because we have built this application using an open source tool called Electron that basically allows you to leverage your web development skill and uh, build multi-platform application. Our app works in the same way on Mac, Linux, and Windows, of course. The second reason why uh, we are not the typical application that you download from the Windows Store is because uh, uh, we stay in background here in the, the tri area and wait for something to happen into the system, like, uh, for example, some music being played with uh, Spotify. And it's been a while, if you will see after a few seconds, uh, our app is able to detect the Spotify process, uh, what Spotify is uh, playing and display the lyrics uh, synchronized with uh, the music. And finally, uh, our application is not uh, a standard Windows, universal Windows application, also because uh, we need to interact with software that is already available on the, on the end user system. Uh, of course, I showed you the interaction with Spotify that happens through the loopback interface. And as you may know, this is not something a universal app are allowed to do. But we also need to interact with Windows Media Player and iTunes with the COM object invocation. This is another feature that we can do on uh, uh, Universal Platform. So, we had three challenges that I'm recapping. Here it is uh, the recap. The first, that we are not using the standard official Microsoft tools for building the app. Second, we uh, had a behavior that is not uh, universal app friendly. And third, we need to interact with other software that is available on the uh, computer system. So how we did the conversion? The, the, standard, the tool that Microsoft suggests you to use for doing the conversion is uh, called a desktop conversion toolkit. It basically allows you to, uh, um, uh, it, it follows whatever you are doing with your own installer. You don't, it doesn't need your uh, uh, source code for doing that. Monitors whatever you are doing and replicates it in a PEX package. Uh, this works great, but of course it's not uh, uh, optimized with the, the type of application that you are building. Uh, our solution uh, uh, was to use uh, an open source uh, uh, tool called the Electron Windows Store. Uh, it, is, it works for Electron application, and it basically allows you to, with just one line uh, of, uh, uh, just uh, uh, executing it from command line, providing your, um, uh, uh, your application directory, to build uh, the, uh, an Apex package that is uh, valid for installation as a side load. Having the Apex is not enough for publishing on the Windows Store because you also need to uh, respect all the policy that, that uh, the Windows Store provides you for protecting the user for misusage of the platform. In our case, as I said, we are going to register our application at Windows uh, Startup. 
And for such a purpose, we were using a very popular electron module called AutoLaunch. Uh, AutoLaunch is uh, great because it works in the same way regardless of the, pa the platform that we are using. And uh, it, is, uh, it is doing all the dirty stuff by, by uh, internally without you doing anything and uh, being worried of anything. But at the end of the day, it was doing too, mu too much dirty stuff. In our case, it was using for writing into the registry another module called WinReg. This module is uh, uh, both not efficient and not uh, uh, possible to use in a uh, desktop bridge application. Because if you look at uh, line 140, it is spawning a process from the system to the two directory. This has two problems. It's not efficient because every time you need to access a key a registry key, you are spawning a process, so it's an overkill. And this, is, this is also an overkill for Windows 7 application. But the main problem with the uh, Windows Store application is uh, that whatever it, this process is doing cannot be rolled back once and the, eventually the user decides to uninstall your application. So this is something that could not allow to pass the certification for you. If you really want to write into the registry, you need to do that from your own process so that uh, all the changes are uh, virtualized in your own app uh, container. And this is a module that does this, providing all the required binding to an Electron application. But at the end of the day, if you want to integrate your app with the system, uh, with, uh, your Win32 app with the system, the best way to do that is to use the so-called Windows uh, Desktop Bridge extension. You can basically declare into your Apex manifest uh, some uh, integration point like a file type extension or a new context menu item uh, in the file explorer context menu, and uh, you have done. In our case, we are using a, a tree extension. Of course, the first one is called the startup extension, and it's the one that allows us to start at Windows uh, login. As you can see, there is not a requirement that the process that you are starting at login is the same that is uh, started when the user taps or clicks on the application icon. The second uh, extension has been introduced with the creators update and basically allows you to configure the firewall uh, for your application on the uh, end user system. We are needing this because, as I said, we need to uh, contact the pro Spotify process to the loopback connection. And uh, this basically enables us to do that. The third extension is uh, the Windows protocol extension and allows you, us to define a protocol handler that we can catch in our own application. We are needing this because uh, uh, we have also a development platform and uh, uh, on all the platform where, where up our app is, uh, can be installed, we provide uh, some handy uh, protocol URI like this one that let other application to deep link our own app. The most important one is this, this one that basically allows you to provide the, uh, your metadata at the position, and we take care of displaying the lyrics in the right position and going from that point uh, on. So, at the end of the day, we didn't uh, convert anything. We removed some code that was not uh, allowed on the Windows Store. We use the open source tools, not official tools, for doing the conversion process. We had to revise all the NPM module that we were linking into our app because uh, we, were, uh, we need to be sure that we, not, we are not doing something that was not uh, possible to do on the Windows Store. At uh, the end of the day, if you want to integrate with the system, you have to look to the desktop extensions. So the results. So we had to do some work for being on the Windows Store. But we are happy having do, done that because, uh, first of all, we had an increase in our downloads. Uh, we registered a two-digit percentage increase in the number of downloads that we are able to uh, get from uh, the store, thanks to the publication of our app. The second reason we are happy is because we can leverage all the features that Windows Source provides you for making uh, your development uh, life uh, easier. First of all, uh, auto updates, uh, the store deals with that. You do not have to provide any kind of infrastructure for that. Uh, 
And uh, in se second, you can leverage uh, the feedback and review system to uh, start a sort of uh, uh, um, communication with the your own users. So you can engage your own users. When we planned the app, we wanted to support Groove as a Windows player, but we are still not able to integrate with that. So when we launched, we only supported iTunes and uh, Spotify. A lot of users complained about that, and some of them suggested us to integrate the Windows Media Player. Doing that uh, gave us a lot of good feedback from users because they were aware that, we, that uh, uh, we were listening to their feedback. But at the end of the day, you want to integrate with the Windows Store because you want to support new Windows APIs. So, uh, we haven't done that, uh, this yet. Uh, I'm showing you some demo of what we will be available on our app in the next uh, uh, weeks. So, first of all, if you want to uh, integrate Windows Store API in an Electron app, the one-stop solution is looking at this uh, uh, open source project called the NodeRT. NodeRT is both a collection of uh, Node.js modules that you can install and use as, as they are, or also, and also in a handy tool that where, where you can put uh, the um, metadata file, uh, Windows metadata API file here, pick up a namespace and produce a skeleton for your bindings. This uh, really works very good. So, as I said, we want to support uh, a rich actionable notification in our, our app. Uh, and uh, this is because this is the state of the art of Windows 7 notification when uh, they run on Windows 10. That is a very bad experience. What we w w wanted to do uh, was achieving an interface like this one with the Nero image and uh, uh, the image of the artist has some well formatted text in it. So for doing that, we created the required XML here that I'm not commenting. Uh, if you are a Windows or app developer, you know how to do that uh, by your own. And we also made, uh, 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 imported in, in this test script the required uh, namespace made with the uh, Norati tools and called this API like we are used to do in a Windows Store uh, application. The problem is that the first time we have done that, we got an error. This is because well, only Windows Store application can call this API. So what you can do for avoiding building the app every time you need to do that? It is a five-step uh, five uh, process. You can create a uh, standard universal uh, project for JavaScript application. You add the executable file that you wish to run inside the environment, the, the Apex environment. Import uh, your uh, um, uh, namespace definition that you may need later on. Declare, this is the most important one, you declare the, window, the um, application as a Windows desktop application here. And at the end of the day, use an extension called the app execution extension. This basically registers a, a process called the bridged node inside your own uh, uh, system path that, that, uh, that calls uh, node X, but from within an app X uh, context. So this time, if we run bridged node and the same, uh, ex uh, the same JavaScript file as before, we get the rich extensions, the rich uh, notification. Here it is. Much better than, than the other one. So, of course, the rich actionable notification are not the only reason and the only API we would like to integrate in our app. The second is uh, uh, called uh, Project Roam. Pro uh, Project Roam is a very uh, complex infrastructure that in a few words enables you to uh, create multi-device experiences uh, in your uh, application. So here uh, I'm projecting my Android phone and I'm playing uh, some music uh, with, the, with this phone. Suppose that I wish to move the, uh, the experience from this Android phone to my PC. We, I had uh, as a test uh, a context menu here which uh, calls into Project Rome SDK. And uh, I can uh, try to discover my devices. So 
trying to restart because, of course, this is the demo god. This is the third time I'm doing this demo, the first one that this doesn't work. So here it is again. Context menu. OK, now, now it should work. Probably it's going me. Uh, it's trying to log in me to the, with Microsoft account. Likely my cookie are already there, so I do not have to write my password on stage. OK. And now here they are my, my uh, devices. The one I'm using for uh, the projection is this one. And when I type project, uh, the Android phone creates uh, a protocol lure invocation as the one I showed you a few moments ago. And if you can see, this, uh, this uh, URL is delivered to my Android application using Android Home. And as you can see, the music should be synchronized. So we have on one side an Android phone, on the other one an Electron application, and when there is no Microsoft technology, and all of this is uh, joined with Project Room. So just a quick recap of the last part of my presentation. So if you want to add the Windows uh, Store API to an Electron application, look at the NodeRT project. Uh, it, is, it provides you with uh, the bindings already um, available for most of the scenario that you like. Sometimes you need to tweak uh, the, mo the code produced for, for making it usable. If you want to test your application, you do not need to every time to build the AppX and then uh, install it on a system. You can create your own uh, node version that runs from within the desktop bridge and even attach a debugger to it. And uh, then at last, have a look at Project Rome because it's really powerful and enables new scenarios that are useful for your uh, uh, end user. Um, here it is a list of uh, uh, presentation relevant about the technologies I just explained to you. The f uh, all of them already happened, unlikely, but you can find the uh, uh, recordings on the Channel 9 um, uh, website. Thank you.